Figuring out which gear to upgrade to with money I've earned is something I've been calculating since I made my account. Making every piece of gold go as far as possible is going to help your account's efficiency a tremendous amount. This guide is going to focus on getting the most DPS possible out of your magic equipment. Although there are times where defense or accuracy are more important, like bossing. I will try to mention reasons to buy different pieces of gear earlier, but I will definitely miss things. If you think a boss might work better with a different gear set, don't be afraid to throw it into the DPS calculator. See below for the link to that. This guide will discuss the most useful gear pieces to buy in general. There are niche cases where you would want to buy other gear setups before some of the items discussed. I would always recommend investing in ranged or melee before investing in magic, as you very rarely use it for bossing. Keep that in mind as I discuss what upgrades to buy, as none of these exist in a vacuum. This guide will assume you already have a few mil lying around. Realistically, you shouldn't be using magic at really early levels. Magic is a significantly different attack style than ranged or melee in the places you use it. Because magic has a chance to splash, it is much less accurate than the other styles against any monsters that have even a semblance of magic defense. A monster's magic defense is calculated based on both the monster's magic defense and their magic level. Typically, you will see people mage at places like Barrows, Dust Devils, or Necreals because these monsters have no magic defense and only level 1 magic. For these monsters, your magic accuracy only slightly affects your damage output, and this is why you will see some people mage some monsters wearing full melee armor. Unless a monster you are fighting has significant defense against the other combat styles, or has virtually no magic defense, you very rarely will want to be maging it. The only things that affect your max hit is the spell you are using and your gear's magic damage bonus. Except for the cases of staves with built-in spells like the trident, these often scale with your magic level as well. Magic accuracy is almost always much less important than magic damage bonus. And this is the main stat that the guide will be focusing on. I'm going to split this guide into two, one section for Slayer gear and one for general gearing for things like bossing. The Slayer section will be more pertinent info for gearing in situations where any monster has extremely low magic level and extremely low magic defense. Which does actually sometimes apply outside of Slayer, think Dagonoth Rex or even Scorpia. The regular gear section will apply for bosses where you are forced to mage or practically forced to because of their high defense and other styles. Zalra or Ohm are good examples of this. If you aren't sure about how to gear for something, check the stats of the monster in question on the wiki. I also want to mention the only real unlockable item Magic Gear has, which is the Mage Arena Capes. The Mage Arena mini quest requires 60 magic for the basic cape, which you should probably do as soon as you get the level. The basic cape provides a plus 10 magic attack bonus, one of the only capes that provides any magic attack bonus, period. You can upgrade your cape to an imbued version by completing the Mage Arena 2 mini quest. This quest requires 75 magic and completion of the prior quest. This quest requires you to kill three mini bosses with their respective god spell, which is actually pretty tough at only 75 magic, but still perfectly doable. I would recommend getting this completed as soon as you can as well. The imbued cape's plus 15 magic attack bonus, as well as a 2% magic damage bonus. This is the only cape in the game to provide magic damage. This cape is a fairly large DPS upgrade, and absolutely worth rushing. The only other unlockable item is Barrow's Gloves from the quest Recipe for Disaster. These are not even the best in slot for magic. That would be the Tormented Bracelet. These provide a fairly small plus 6 magic attack bonus versus a combat bracelet's plus 3 so they really don't even help magic too much. I would recommend getting the gloves fairly quickly anyway, as they are incredibly good for the other combat styles, and can bridge the gap until you can afford the bracelet. In the case of Slayer Bursting, your magic level will only improve your accuracy, which hardly matters for burst tasks. The main exception to this is unlocking Ice Barrage at level 94, which is literally a 30% DPS upgrade. It is worth boosting this level with Divine Magic Potions or an Imbued Heart, so you can use it more quickly, as the extra cost of using Ice Barrage is offset by the extra damage it puts out, basically just saving you 30% of the time your task would have taken. I want to quickly mention the topic of what armor to use for burst tasks before I get into the entire upgrade chain. Magic accuracy mainly reduces your chance to splash at a target, but it also slightly improves the chance of you hitting higher as well. In the case of most burst tasks, you won't be splashing at all unless you have extremely negative magic accuracy. Most people wear proselyte armor when bursting for its prayer bonus. 
But there is also an argument I've seen for vestment robes from Clue Scrolls. Vestment robes provide a roughly 1% DPS increase over Proselyte, but you're trading that off for three less prayer bonus. I checked ARIMS for good measure as well, and it's only 1.5% better DPS than Proselyte. I honestly would recommend just using Proselyte typically, as if you don't own Ancestral Robes, you most likely also don't have money to waste on prayer potions. Upgrading your equipment for burst tasks is pretty simple. Damage bonuses are more important than prayer bonuses, which is more important than magic accuracy bonuses. Because bursting is a pricey investment for the runes to do it anyway, I'm going to expect you to already have some more pricey items than the other setups. Let's start with a basic gear setup. Slayer Helmet, of course, for the damage bonus. A Black Mask will not work for Dust Devil tasks, so I would recommend unlocking the helmet if you are considering bursting. If you're bursting off task, I would buy a God Miter over a Farseer Helm, as this actually provides a plus 4 magical accuracy bonus, which really isn't bad compared to the Farseer Helm's plus 6 bonus, and it also has the best in slot prayer bonus of plus 5, a clear winner. You want to bring your best blessing, best mage arena cape, and a cult necklace, this is only 450k currently, and provides a massive 10% magic damage bonus. If you can't afford this, I would recommend holding off on bursting entirely. An Ancient Staff, Proselyte Armor, Barrow's Gloves, Mystic Boots, and no Ring or Shield. Keep in mind my upgrade focus here is always damage first, prayer second, accuracy last. The first item I would buy is a Book of Darkness. For only 500k, this provides not only a plus 10 magic attack bonus, but plus 5 prayer bonus. The prayer bonus alone makes this the best in slot choice for burst tasks, as even an arcane spirit shield has 2 less prayer bonus. If you have an unholy book anyways, it is also a great choice, as it has the same prayer bonus and only 2 less magic attack bonus. I questioned which was a more important upgrade next, either Devout Boots or Seer's Ring, but I went with the ring. An imbued Seer's Ring costs only 300k, and provides plus 12 magical accuracy. A big upgrade for the low, low price. Grab Devout Boots next. For 1.1 mil, these are the best in slot boots for prayer bonus in the game, at plus 5. These will save you a lot of money in the long run if you grab them early. Next, I would save up and buy a Tormented Bracelet. At 17 mil, this is quite the jump in price for an upgrade. The bracelet provides a plus 5% magic damage bonus, as well as plus 2 prayer bonus. This is a gigantic upgrade, and that's the reason I skipped over the Master Wand even, to save up for the bracelet. Although you can buy the wand, then sell it back to afford the bracelet later, of course. Next, I would fully buy a Master Wand. At 3.5 mil, this provides plus 5 extra magic attack bonus over the Ancient Staff, for a total of plus 20. This is actually a pretty small upgrade. The main reason we grab it is to avoid the Ancient Staff's minus one prayer bonus. The next upgrades are all very expensive and don't have overlap with regular magic gear in some cases, so I recommend waiting to grab these until you have a decently large bank value. The next upgrade is one I rarely see people talk about or use, and it's the Stock Nightmare Staff. Clocking in at 40 mil, this tends to vary quite a bit, I've seen it hit as low as 30 mil. The Staff is capable of auto-casting Ancients, but actually has 4 less attack bonus compared to the Master Wand. So why would I buy this? Well, the real reason the staff is so good is because of its 15% magic damage bonus, equal to the Kodai Wand, which is 83.5 mil. Now the Kodai Wand additionally boasts the ability to not only cast infinite water runes, but also has a 15% chance to not use runes when casting an offensive spell, as well as a much higher attack bonus of 28 this is handy for saving you money in the long term, but realistically, how much does this rune saving feature matter? In order to make up that 43.5 mil GP difference, the staff would have to save you 26,589 ice barrage casts. To give you some perspective on this, to save that many casts, you would need to cast over 170,000 times, getting you close to 100 mil total magic XP. This is why I would save the Kodai for last, due to its massive price tag. But, if you have the money anyway, you might as well use a Kodai, but there are other things you should buy first. If you plan on doing a lot of bursting, I would grab a Ring of the Gods next. This costs 20 mil, and provides a plus 8 prayer bonus when imbued, and also acts as a Holy Wrench, which saves an inventory space, that's kinda handy. 
The eight prayer bonus is a lot more important than the eight magic attack bonus from the Seer's Ring. This can be a questionable upgrade because the ring is only very good specifically for bursting really and not great for any other style or combat situation. I might skip this if I was close to 99 magic and slayer and wouldn't benefit much from it, but it will save you quite a bit of money and you can uncharge it to get 80% of your NMZ points back and resell it after you finish 99 slayer. Next, I would grab ancestral robes. In total, the top and legs comes to 162 mil. Extremely expensive. If you're bursting off task, I would probably buy the hat first, as it is only 13 mil. Each piece of the set provides a 2% magic damage bonus and significant magic attack bonuses. You unfortunately do lose the proselyte's prayer bonus, but the huge DPS difference is worth the loss. Finally, I would grab that Kodai. Like I said earlier, this guy costs 83.5 mil, a very pricey upgrade, but providing a very small DPS upgrade, although the rune saving effect will save you money in the long run. This setup is the absolute max gear I would buy for bursting if I had infinite money. Next, let's talk about gearing for general bossing. This setup will help you at bosses like Zalra and Ulm in raids. Here, accuracy matters a lot more than prayer bonus. My priorities here are still magic damage first, but magic accuracy second, and then prayer bonus third this time. My DPS calculations will be against Zolra for the purposes of this section. I also want to mention the stabs I discussed earlier that scale with your magic level. It may be worth paying to burst levels over buying a piece of gear. This is worth checking the staff on the wiki and checking if you are close to gaining a max hit. Starting with the same gear as the Slayer section, but using Mystics instead of Proselyte, and a Trident of the Seas instead of the Ancient Staff, we have a basic gear setup. Again, like with the Slayer setup, first thing I would buy is a Book of Darkness. At only 500k GP, the magical accuracy is even more important than with the Slayer setup, and it has that juicy plus 5 prayer bonus. This is about a 5% DPS upgrade over having no shield. Next, I would grab a Seer's Ring. At only 300k, the plus 12 magic accuracy adds another 5% DPS on top. Next, I would grab a Trident of the Swamp. At 4.1 mil, this is a massive upgrade with about a 15% DPS increase. And that's not counting the chance to inflict Venom. As per usual, the weapon upgrades are always the biggest, although this does have a 200 GP higher cast cost, the huge DPS difference makes this very worth paying for. Next, I would grab Arims. At 4.4 mil currently, this provides about a 1.5% DPS upgrade with plus 17 magic attack bonus and significantly higher defenses. Skip the hood as it gives no DPS increase, and slight defense bonuses. It's not worth the repair costs. Next, I would save up for a Tormented Bracelet. This costs 17 mil, with the bracelet providing an extra plus 4 magic attack bonus, as well as 5% magic damage bonus. This brings your DPS up a huge 3.5%. The next upgrades get pretty marginal from here on. I would next grab Eternal Boots at 3.9 mil, and I'm only mentioning these boots because the other boots are such small upgrades. Wizard boots are literally a 0.07% DPS increase at this point. You can buy the other boots as you make the money for Eternals. These boots are only plus 5 mage attack bonus over Mystic boots, providing a 0.35% DPS increase. I'm going to be mentioning the Sang staff here, and you should be buying it here if you plan on doing a lot of raids, as it's incredibly good at Ulm. The staff costs a whopping 125 mil. It has the exact same stats as a Trident of the Swamp, but the spell it uses has an extra max hit. The real reason you use it is for the passive healing buff. It has a 1 out of 6 chance to heal you for 50% of the damage you dealt with an attack. This is also really useful at Dagonoth Kings if you plan on doing those. But other than these two cases, Trident of the Swamp is usually a better choice. You should either skip the Saying Staff or buy it last if you don't plan on raiding or doing DKs. Next, grab the Ancestral Outfit, clocking in at 155 mil. These are an incredibly small DPS upgrade if they don't give you a max hit, so you will need to calculate for yourself depending on your magic level. Getting a max hit is about a 3% DPS upgrade, which is pretty big. Typically, you want to buy in the order of hat, then top, then bottom, but it depends on what content you are doing. Raids has some different configurations. 
The full set at level 99 gives you two max hits, which is a big 6% DPS increase. Next, I would probably buy the Arcane Spirit Shield at 150 mil GP. This loses two prayer bonus, but gives you plus 20 magic attack bonus and significant melee and range defense. Yes, I'm skipping over the other shields. These all lose all of your huge plus five prayer bonus from the Book of Darkness. And I really can't think of situations where you need melee defense while maging. The slight magic attack bonuses from the other shields are typically not worth losing that prayer bonus in most situations. Even in raids one, you typically camp at the Tome of Fire. The Arcane is about 0.6% better DPS over the Book of Darkness. Now I'm going to mention the Harmonized Nightmare Staff. This costs a ridiculous 1.6 bill, and I honestly don't think it's worth buying. The Harmonized Nightmare Staff allows you to cast regular spells a tick faster. This is technically the best in slot staff for magic in most places, but it loses the ability to venom or heal, like with the Trident or Sanguinesti. In things like ulted raids after you have practiced and don't need Sang Staff healing, the Harm Staff is the absolute best option. Because of its insane price and small upgrade, you would probably make more money investing that 1.6 bill into something else, rather than that tiny amount of extra GP would make at places you use it because of its tiny DPS boost. It also can't be used if you are brewed down, because you use Fire Surge, which can be really annoying anywhere you use brews. And that's it for the video. If you liked the video, leave a like and or subscribe. Thanks guys.